Hey everybody, welcome back. So today is the day, the one that we've all been waiting for, our Creality CR-10S Pro. This is from Tiny Machines, and there's a reason to buy from a reputable source like Tiny Machines. So more about that in just a minute. So if you guys are ready and we're set, not only am I going to show you about this torque wrench and what torque settings we need to have for the bolts, but we're going to get to the unboxing of this right after this. Today on LD3D, our episode shout out goes to Tiny Machines 3D. 3D printers, parts, filament, and support. A Houston, Texas based company for great working 3D printers. Now let's jump into it. All right, here we go. We're gonna get started. So the easiest way to unbox this is really easy. Now a lot of people stick it up on their side, they turn it on their other side, they try and lift it out the top, but I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way how to unbox this. Works great. Dip it up on its side like this, you're not gonna hurt it. And then all we have to do is cut the bottom like this. Cut this down, cut this across, now we're going to tilt it back, hold this one under, tip it straight down like this so the actual machine is face up, lift the box off. I know what you're thinking, why was it important on how to unbox this? Well. And so we can make sure that our parts and everything are safe inside the box so we're not tipping it, jarring it, or jostling it. So this box right here is awesome. So you can see our printer is from Tiny Machines. Now, Tiny Machines are amazing. And the reason why, they do all kinds of upgrades to this machine. So it is ready to go right out of the box. They check the machine when it gets here. Remember, these machines come from China. Nothing wrong with that, but during shipping and barging and freight and forklifts and everything that goes into it, stuff can come loose. Stuff can be knocked loose. And that's just normal. It's nothing against the, the machine itself. It comes down to the actual machine in transit. So what they do is they check over the machine. They make sure it is 110% before it gets to you. And that's why they're so important. Not to mention Chris takes time out of his day He's the owner of Tiny Machines, and he gets back to you absolutely as soon as possible. I have had nothing but amazing communication with them. Now this unboxing and this printer is not sponsored by Tiny Machines. We are paying for this unit. So this unit is ours. So just to be clear on that, this is an unbiased unboxing setup and first print of the CR-10S Pro. Now, we're going to go into some of the really cool additions that we had Tiny Machines and Chris do for us. And it takes all the guesswork out, so that as soon as we get this, it is ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off our ends. The floor will hold the foam pieces. And then all we have to do is take the gantry out. Now, on our gantry, we want to be careful because we do have an additional plug adapter on this side and I'm, so I'm gonna set this straight down here and I'm not gonna set it where that we can endanger our rods or anything so we're setting it down on a flat surface so that that won't be endangered they did give us a small little spool of white PLA that's what we're gonna use for our start print we'll get this other side off here super super easy again the floor will hold it so this right here is our base. I'll turn it around so that you can see it. This right here is our ribbon cable. That's going to go up and control all of our head movements. This right here is the other part of that green plug that I was talking to you about. I'm going to show you what this is for. Incredible stuff here. So all we have to do to get this going is take our printing out. This right here is all the stuff that they actually went through on the machine. And they physically hand check every single thing on the machine. This is why you buy a reputable printer from a reputable supplier. It's not about what, what is the cheapest cost. Because if you want the cheapest cost, you're going to have issues when you get it. But if you get one that's reputable, you know it's sound from Jump Street. You know that they've went through and taken the time to do it. They've tested the bed. They've tested the motors. They've actually tested the extruder. They go through the full process. 
So that's really incredible. And they sign off on it and you get that sheet. This right here is the pamphlet and information from Creality. It's a great little information booklet. It tells you exactly how to put everything together. So we're going to be needing that in a minute. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take this packaging off here so that we can free up that bed. And this can just go away. So this right here is our build bed. So we're going to check our build bed for left and right movement. And there is a teeny bit of movement there. I'm going to roll it slightly forward, check the travel, and I like to just gently pull it back and I'm putting just enough pressure on it so that I'm going to move that bed. What I'm feeling for is any part where it's kind of jockeying or, or catching and if there's nothing catching then we know we're good to go. But on that area here there's just that little bit of movement and I'm going to show you how to tighten that up here in just a minute. So let's get into our box here. So inside of our box, we've got some extra wheels. Really, really cool there. We have extra end stop switches. Those end stop switches are really critical. That means that we have extra parts should something go wrong. We can keep our printing going. We have extra nozzles as well. They look like they're about a 0.4, but we'll check that out later. And then we also have some extra belts. We have an extra thermal couple and a thermistor as well. So if our hot end starts to go funky, we actually have extra replacement parts to fix it. This is really nice to get in here. This you save, hold on to that. We have our card reader and our little micro SD card because this operates on a micro SD card. Really kind of nice. We've got our standard plug. A lot of people call it an Edison plug, but it's just a standard 115 US plug. So it's got a good length to it as well. I probably wouldn't go much over this length. So really awesome there. And then we have our shims. So we have our hot end shim, which is this one. And this shim right here is used for two purposes. One, it's to really make sure that your Z is really straight and level to the, bed, to the bed. But it also sets a probe that normally comes with the CR-10S. We had that changed. And I'll show you that in a minute. Then we have some more extra nozzles. And we actually have a couple of bezels as well that are extra, some extra T-nuts, and then we have the four most important bolts. And those bolts are what hold everything together. So those are important. And then inside of this, we get that tool set that we talked about in the opening. So that tool set is right here. So you get a couple of different Allen, Allen wrenches, you get a flathead screwdriver, and you get a couple of wrenches, these wrenches right here for adjustments on the machine, like taking the camber out of our build bed to make sure that it's correct. So those are really important as well. This right here is our filament holder. A lot of people are a little unsure about the filament holder. Does it really work well? How does it work? Is it good to have it on top of the machine or isn't it? The jury's still out on that. That's, that's your call, but this is pretty amazing. We have a USB cable as well. So the USB cable will go from the unit directly to your computer system. It works on that same traditional 3.0 USB cable going into your computer. Have the putty knife or pancake scraper or part lifter, and it's pretty sharp. Um, this right here is gonna be good for our first print but we're going to be immediately changing the build bed surface on this to a wham bam build bed. So we already have our wham bam build bed right here. So this is going to go on there almost straight away. So we're going to use this one time just to get our, our first print parts off and then we're never going to have to use this again. These are a little bit scary to use because if you get your hand in the right place and you get your, your part coming off you can stab your hand. And it's happened to me many times. Then they give you another piece of uh, Teflon tube. So this right here is pretty great. Um, this is real Teflon. So, so this is awesome. So everything that comes in that box. So what I'm gonna do is get everything straightened up here. I'm gonna move the camera in a little bit closer and then I'm gonna show you how to put this together. Okay, so we're back. So this right here I've turned sideways so that you can kind of get a better idea of what we have to work with. So inside of these little cutouts right here, there's gonna be two holes. You can see them down here. 
Those two holes are where we're going to push our bolts up through to yeah. attach our gantry. And our bolts are going to be these bolts right here. These are M4 bolts. So before we actually install the bolts, check it out. They've already got our lock, our lock rings on it already. So once we get those in there, if they're properly tightened and torqued, they're going to hold securely. So how do we know about torque specs? Well, it comes down to having a torque chart for the specific bolts. Now, as you can see here, we're four millimeter bolts. So we've got a pitch of 7.7 uh, or we have a pitch of 7. It depends on what millimeter bolts that we have. So you have kind of a coarse thread and a fine thread, sort of, with metrics. So all we need to know is this first set of strength gauge right here. What grade is the bolt? It's 6.8. So under the 6.8, we want to set our actual torque wrench to 1.91 Newton meters. On one side, we have inch foot-pounds. If you roll this over, we have Newton meters. Then all you're going to do is pull down on the locking mechanism, and you're going to rotate this up so that this line matches with the center line, and that the edge of this profile meets at the bottom of where the line comes down. That will properly set the right amount of torque. So let me get this one set here. So we're going to back it off until it's zero. And then we're going to go one and a little bit. And that is our torque right there. So we're properly set for our torque. Now, so if you put these bolts in there too tight, you can strip out the aluminum uprights. If you put them in there too soft, you're going to get them to wiggle after a period of time after it's moving. So that's why it's important to have the right torque. So I'm going to pull this off the edge so that I can get access to these two screws. Then we're going to turn this around to put our next two screws in. But before I do that, I want to talk to you about a couple of the improvements that uh, we had Tiny Machines do on this. So if you look at the bottom here, we no longer have the same type of probe that normally comes on the 10s Pro. So the BL Touch is amazing because that means that it doesn't matter about our build bed, it doesn't matter what kind it is, it doesn't matter about what surface it is, it doesn't matter if it's magnetic or not magnetic, it will work no matter what. So that's part of the really cool thing about getting this from Tiny Machines. So what we're gonna do is set this in place. We're gonna align the 20 by 40 inside of that little cutaway and groove. For this right here, we're gonna have to raise the head up. So all I'm doing is slightly turning the Z axis and you'll notice something really cool. Most of the time, if you've seen these being installed and people doing it, they have to grab both and turn it. There's a reason why I don't have to. That's another upgrade for Tiny Machines, a timing belt that runs along the top of the gantry. So what I'd like to do is just take this out of the torque wrench so that I can get it started. You know, it just takes a minute to to get it started in there. Now, I don't want to tighten them down to the torque rating yet. I want to get all of our bolts in place first, and then we'll tighten them all down because we don't want anything to be crossed. So we've got this side in place. Now we're going to spin this around. Be really careful and gentle with your wires. That's your brains of the unit, so we want to make sure that these are taken well care of. We're going to spin this around right here. Grab our next two bolts. One thing to remember is this printer has already been put together by Tiny Machines, so we know it goes together perfectly. So if it doesn't, then we need to start looking at things and figuring out why. So we've got those in. Now we're going to actually torque these down to the right torque. That click right there, that's exactly the right amount of torque for that bolt. If you go too much, then that lock washer won't actually do its job. You can actually cause irreparable damage to those lock washers. And again, that's part of the torque. Now we'll spin this back around. 
and we'll do this last side. There's our click. We'll do our last one here. And that's our click. Great. And that's perfect. It's also a good idea to check the other bolts that are holding all of our other components together to make sure that they are tight as well, just in case they came loose during shipping. Also, we want to go ahead and mount our spool holder. And our spool holder is mounted with two bolts that tie into this frame. You can see them there. We want to check and make sure that this belt right here is tight and set inside of our gears correctly on both sides. And remember, that keeps our gantry from being able to turn side to side. So it keeps it level with our build bed. That's the upgrade from Tiny Machines. As you can see, I've already taken care of this side here, but I'll show you how to plug in this side. It's very easy. All we do is feed our wires down into the build frame, and they've done an awesome job at taking care of the holes here. When this edition was first released, there were some problems with the holes there, but Creality, being the quality company that they are, they've solved that problem. All we do is fold these down, and then all we have to do is clip this motor cable into the stepper motor. They can only go one way because there are feed dogs on the top of the connector. Make sure it's seated in there and you should hear a click. And next what we want to do is our final wiring connections that attach to here. Our ribbon cable here controls all of our upper gantry X motors, Y motors. And it also controls our feed sensor. It controls our Bowden extruder. And it controls the hot end and thermistor and control fans. And that plug is the ribbon cable, which is this one here. All you have to do is insert the ribbon cable. It has feed dogs on it as well, as you can see here. They can only go one way, so you don't have to worry. Push it in there until both these swing arms come in and lock. Now you'll notice this green plug. This green plug, of course we talked about this one in our opening part of the segment. These two actually go together, and this is how our BL touch sensor works. So these two screws clip together. They also have these two set screws, one on either side, that you can screw together to make sure that this plug never comes apart. Now I might just take some self-adhesive tape and just stick that on the side, just as a strain relief, but we'll do that in a future episode. Setting our Z height, we need to make sure that it's parallel and square with the framing. And once that's done, we will square our bed to the Z. Now to do that, you're going to need the shim, which comes inside of our toolkit, and that's this piece here. So we're going to take the shim out, and we're going to move the gantry so that this will fit under one side. Generally, we set it to the side with all of the motor housings and everything first. And you can do that by simply turning the lead screw and turning that so that it will raise and lower the gantry. And we want it to just touch that gantry, just like that. And that's pretty good. Then we're going to check our other side. And that's absolutely perfect. Now, that is why we act this timing belt that's right up here. It is absolutely level every single time. That keeps us true. And that's why we use Tiny Machines as well, because they give us the ability to have those upgrades. So for our unit here, this is completely level and it's completely level directly from Tiny Machines. All right, so we're all set up, we're ready to go. We've checked all of our axes to make sure all of our bolts are tightened. We have checked all of our movements to make sure that they move freely and without problems. We've checked our tension and adjusted our Z-axis and our timing belt that we have up here. Remember, this is a modification from Tiny Machines. And we have our BL touch sensor, which is down here, in place of the sensor that generally comes 
on the CR-10S Pro. So now it's time to turn it on and see if it will home and make sure all of the mechanics are working correctly. So it's as simple as plugging in our power. Now, when you are using any type of 3D printer because of the metal cases and everything, make sure that you're plugging this printer into an outlet that has a ground. If you don't know if it's grounded or not, you can buy a little plug that you can plug into it and it's a circuit tester. You can get them from home improvement stores and they generally cost about 10 or $15. But they're well worth it to make sure that you're completely safe. You wanna make sure that these have a ground. Now what we'll do is turn it on. You'll see everything come to life. You'll hear its little jingle and hopefully we'll see the bed and the head start to home. So you saw the BL touch just now. It went through its start routine, which is exactly what it should. Creality said hello by its playful little jingle. And that looks really good. So let's go ahead and let's home this. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna push on settings, we're gonna push move, and we're gonna push the home button right in the center. And she's alive. You saw the BL touch sensor engage. This is all firmware from Tiny Machines. It's their, their rendition of the Creality firmware. They've made their own firmware, and that's so that we can install the BL Touch. Now, it looks like it homed correctly, and it's just sitting here waiting for our next responses. And what we'll do now is we're going to set all of our heights for the build bed. So the first thing that we want to do is heat up both the bed and the extruder to a working temperature so that we can set our bed heights correctly. If we do our bed heights when it's cold, and then we try and print a part where we warm the bed or we do other temperatures on the nozzle, it can throw off our height. Now the BL Touch will do a really good job at resensing that when, it, when we actually print, but it's only if you do that function before your print. So it's best to set this up in a configuration that you're gonna use most frequently. So the first thing that we want to do is heat up our bed and our nozzle. We're going to do that by coming over to the main screen. We're going to push temperature. We're going to push automatic. Push PLA and that will start our process. But we want to set this according to Tiny Machines bed leveling procedures. So we're going to push menu. We're going to push on the temperature and we're going to change that to 200. Just simply push the keys and press OK. We're going to change our bed temperature. They wanted it 70 from Creality. Tiny Machine says to set it at 60 degrees and press OK. Then what we'll wait for is for the bed to heat up to 60 degrees and our nozzle to reach 200 degrees and then we'll start our leveling process. So our bed has came up to temperature and now we can move one screen back, one more screen back to our settings tab. Push that and we're going to go leveling. Once we go leveling, the head's going to move, let it do its procedure. While it's doing that, go ahead and grab the shim that comes in your kit. And this shim is really important to set it by. It's a 0 0.20 thickness. When it starts to come down, you want to put this just underneath it, just in case it comes down too far so it doesn't damage the build bed. But this one looks just fine. So since they've already pre adjusted this from the factory there in Houston we're actually looking really good and you want this to just barely touch that nozzle you don't want to have too much pressure on it and that actually looks really good just barely touching so once that touches and you get that set push the AUX leveling button push that our next screen you'll see these five points and the five points is what we're actually going to adjust and test so again take your feeler gauge and put it into the corner press the first button 
as soon as it finishes its homing sequence. All right, we can press the number two and it's gonna move into that location. And once it's there, you wanna check this one more time. And if it feels a little bit tight, then roll your wheel down. You just want this to barely touch that nozzle. You don't wanna have any pressure on that nozzle at all. And just roll the feed screw down here on the bottom, the big adjustment knobs, until it just barely, barely touches. Once you get that, go to number three. Perfect. And number three is perfect. Let's go number four. And number four feels great. You can see that you're just barely, barely moving this with your finger. You shouldn't have to put too much pressure on it at all. You should just barely want to fill that nozzle on the feeler gauge. And that one feels perfect. Now, I would recommend going through one more time just to make sure that we have them all correct. Okay. So we're going to press measuring. And when, once we push measuring, this is going to auto-level the bed. And how auto-level works, you'll see right here the BL Touch is going to send its probe down. It's going to come down until it touches the build bed. It's going to retract that probe and then it's going to measure it again. It's going to do that 16 times around the build bed. And what it's doing right now is measuring the differences in the build height according to the Z set that we just finished. So we're calibrating the actual total size of the build bed. Now what you'll notice in this software, because we have the BL Touch installed, is on this next movement as it comes over, the nozzle will actually come off of the build bed. And that is okay. That is totally programmed to do that. It's doing that so that our BL Touch can measure the extreme side of the build bed more accurately. So we're measuring more surface area of the build bed. And Tiny Machines has set that up in their firmware as well. This ending sequence right here is a new file that they just wrote. And they wrote that in about a day for us. And what's great about that is Tiny Machines saw that there was a little bit of an issue with how it was functioning for me. And I emailed them. They got right back with me the very next day because it was about 10 o'clock at night when I emailed them. They got right back with me and they solved the problem in a matter of just a few hours. And so what happens is it comes back all the way to home. Before it would go back to the center of the build bed where it would home and it would home incorrectly into the center of the build bed. And I saw that that was an issue, so I contacted them, we talked about it a little bit, and they came up with the perfect solution, which is returning back to where it should. Now to get that hex file, I'm sure if you contacted Tiny Machines, they will be more than happy to help you out with that bit of uh, firmware update. So now you can see exactly those 16 points across the build bed, and you can see that there are some minor fluctuations in the height of the build bed going across as it was set, and the BL Touch registered exactly what they are. When you get finished, make sure the on button is checked, and once you get finished with that, you can just hit the return button. Now we're ready to load filament and start our first print. Okay, so now it's time to load our filament. We've taken our filament out of the package that it came with, and we're gonna load this onto the machine. How we're going to do that is super easy. Since we've got our nozzle preheated right now, it's going to be easy for us to do. So let's take our filament, put it up on our filament holder. We're going to hold on to this end. It's always good to trim this at an angle, and that'll make sure that it goes in as easy as possible. We're going to feed that in through the sensor. You'll see the little LED light up in there. 
and that means that there's filament inside of the sensor. Sometimes you have to wiggle it around just a little bit to get it to actually come through the sensor. Just like that. We'll feed it in. We're going to press lightly on our feed dog here so that we can get that to slide right inside. And then just push gently on your lever here and feed this all the way in until you can get it to start coming out the nozzle. We'll remove that little bit off of our nozzle end. You can see that there was some other color PLA that was in there from before when they were testing and now we're back down to the clean white. So now we're ready for our first print. Congratulations, we've made it to the end of the video where I'm going to be talking a little bit about my ending thoughts on this build of the Creality 10S Pro. Well, uh, I have to tell you, I'm really excited about this printer. It prints really, really well. Very happy with its print quality. A lot of that print quality has to do with Tiny Machines. Tiny Machines really came through for me with this printer and they did a lot of work on this printer before I received it. They installed a BL Touch, which is amazing. It takes the place of the capacitive sensors that go on them. Capacitive sensors are prone to have errors due to humidity, heat, environmental conditions, as well as the type of build bed you actually have. So to omit those problems, the BL Touch does a wonderful job and I would not have a printer that doesn't have a BL Touch. The next thing that they did for us was put this timing belt at the top, which links both sides of the Z-axis. And in doing that, what happens if that belt's not there, and Creality is aware of this problem, but step promoters sit in between steps or might set on a step. When the power is disengaged and when it's re-engaged, they go to the next closest step. So one of the step promoters may be a little higher, a little lower than the other. And what that does is over a period of time, it causes your gantry or your Z-axis to get out of whack. And when that gets out of whack, it screws up your first layer. Now the BL Touch will correct for some of that, but a lot of that can't be corrected for. So to get around that problem, this timing belt is critical. So let's talk about some things I don't like about the printer. I don't like the way the filament goes into the filament set switch that's in here. And the reason why is over a period of time it grinds away at the filament because it goes into an aluminum block and that grinds away at this filament. That causes under extrusion issues at the extruder. It also causes the Bontech gear system that's in here. It causes those to get gummed up with, with powder and it loses track of that. So to correct that problem, I went to Thingiverse and downloaded a repair for that, which should come on this machine already. Creality has known about this issue for a long time about this printer, and they haven't done anything to fix it. So hopefully, if someone at Creality is watching this video, I really hope you take this to heart and get it fixed because you have a fantastic printer. So this right here is a feed pulley that uh, is attached. It's all 3D printed, comes from Thingiverse. I'll have that link down in the description, as well as this part up here, which is a filament guide up here. And this guide keeps your filament from jumping off the spool. Both of these parts, I feel, are really critical for this printer in maintaining it and also giving you hassle-free printing. Now with that said, the tolerances on this printer are amazing. This part fit in here and the tolerances first time out. Now that's pretty important. Now our first print on this printer was a Benji. And our Benji was fairly okay. 10 years ago, I would have done a little happy panda dance. 
But today, with, this, with the amount of technology that there is, the layer heights, all the programming, the slicing details, the G-code replicators, all of those things, this is just okay. Now I did print a couple of others. I was doing some calibrations with it to get that first layer perfect because everything happens at a first layer. So if you have your first layer completely correct, you know the rest of your print is going to print correctly. The only time that that is different is when you make a error like this. It's a half a boat. This was not a fault of the printer or the filament or the extruder. It came down to me. I adjusted the G-code and I manually coded some G-code and I neglected to put back in a heater temperature. So the nozzle temperature dropped below the threshold. It caused it to be jammed, which caused the filament to get jammed and the Bowden extruder being that it is so good, just kept feeding filament. It got all wound around. My fault completely. We all make mistakes. And I'm not afraid to show you mine. So what I did next was I printed another Benchy where I did have all the correct temperatures in place and some of my manual G-code. And I would have to say that this is the best Benchy I think I have ever seen. The back panel where the logo is across the back is legible. And I'll show some detailed up close photos of this one, the same that I did of our original Benchy at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. But this is really amazing. You can read the detail underneath it. All the layers look very pristine. It's very smooth and detailed. This is a high quality Benji. So the next thing that we printed was this flower pot. It is a little small, but we're going to scale that up, see how that does. It does have some really challenging print areas in here. I manually adjusted the G-code because the printer nozzle in Cura Slicer, it moves the head into areas and starts printing in areas that really it doesn't need to. It could continue a certain path and therefore get less stringing. So I modified some of the G-code. The bottom layer, absolutely perfect. And all of the detail is great. There is no stringing in this part whatsoever. And there's just a few little blobs because the angles that are on here exceed what this printer is supposed to be able to print, which these are about 75 degrees. Uh, this printer with my testing could only go up to about 62 degrees and that's with high quality. It can go all the way up to about 65 if you don't mind some of the quality degradation there. And again, a little different. So as I was doing this print, I noticed a lot of over extrusion. So over extrusion is caused by this part uh, when the nozzle comes down and extrudes the plastic, it extrudes too much, which causes a well on each side. And as each path comes over it, it causes more and more wells are called waffling. And that causes this kind of washboardy effect. I think you can hear that. There you go. So that washboardy effect is not something I want. I want perfectly smooth layers. I want good bonding surfaces and I want something that's going to be beautiful after it's printed. I modified the code from that to achieve this one. So we're very happy with that. And I'll throw a little plant in there so you can get kind of the feel of what that would ultimately look like. Now, I do want to talk about one thing, and that's this build surface. Creality did a good job on the build surface, but during our original testing, we had some problems with a hex code. And Tiny Machines was amazing at dealing with that issue. I have to say Tiny Machines is a gold star in my book, and I will be purchasing more uh, printers from them because of that. So they rewrote uh, one of the hex codes for this. It's after that 16 set points that is on the bed to program the printer to know, okay, if the nozzle's at this point, we should adjust the, bed, the Z axis just a little bit for the discrepancies that are in the levelness of the bed. Well, it ended up staying, staying in the center and it would bury that nozzle just a little bit. When it does that, it was scoring the top of this build surface. And so I mentioned that to Tiny Machines and Chris, and he said, we'll look into it. He looked into it a few hours later. I had a hex code. We worked together to get it on the printer. We tested it here as well as in his factory. We both had the same successful results, and it's an amazing thing. That's and it will probably be in that next uh, 
release of the firmware for the Creality 10S Pro printer. They're going to be releasing a new update here soon from what I understand. Not quite sure when. But two days later, as I'm doing some other tests, I find this in the mail. This is a new build bed for this machine. Chris sent it to me because I didn't like the couple of dots that was on the build bed. It's a brand new printer. He said, I will help you out. So he sent me the aluminum plate and the Creality adhesive plate. Kind of interesting on their build surface that it too is self-adhesive. So we'll be implementing that. While that was happening, I ordered a few more build beds from them, and this build bed, build bed is incredible. These you can find on the Tiny Machines website, tinymachines3d.com. And you can find this on there, and this is their polypropylene build bed. Now these, I think, are really incredible. They're very, very flat. I've tested the tolerance on them, and they are exceedingly flat. They are very smooth, and they're lightweight. So we're not going to have the inertial mass that is on the build bed right now, which means faster speeds and higher print qualities. That's pretty amazing. This gives me the ability to uh, experiment with other build bed surfaces as well. So one of those build bed surfaces that we're going to be experimenting with, I, uh, I did get a few of them. Um, we're gonna be experimenting with Wham Bam Build Beds, which is our flexible spring steel build bed. We're also gonna be experimenting with a new one called Easy Peelzy. Uh, they're really awesome. Uh, just so that everybody is clear on this, no one has sponsored my channel. All the information I'm displaying is my own thoughts on this. I'm not affiliated with Tiny Machines outside of purchasing this machine with my own money, which I will be purchasing more in the future because of their customer service. Now getting back to build surfaces, uh, what I never want to see with a 3D printer is one of these. Never. Ever. All build surfaces should be a flex or removable flex material in this day and age. But this, I don't think, should ever be anywhere near a 3D printer. These cause harm, they cause damage if they happen to, to cut you. They're very sharp, they're dangerous. I don't want them anywhere near me. So I think that about covers it for the CR-10S Pro. Remember, you can always subscribe to our channel. That helps keep us going and it keeps these projects flowing in and videos on their way to you. By clicking that bell, you'll always know when a video is released. If you have any comments or questions or you just want to send me a message, you can do so right down in the comments. Look in our description. We've got lots of other links there to some of our other things, as well as all the people that have made this possible. Again, I want to give a huge shout out to Tiny Machines. I think they are one of the best companies that is handling 3D printers that is out there. And if I were you, I would order my printer from Tiny Machines. I would not waste my time on any of the others. They might be a few dollars cheaper, but you're not going to get the customer service you will get with Tiny Machines. Again, thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed the video series, and happy 3D printing. Bye-bye for now.